Happy Wednesday. Um, today's show is a special one. It's a near and dear one to my heart um, because of the stuff that I had to research and what I learned today. So we'll get into it. I can't stand it. I can't. It's every Wednesday. If it ain't one, it's the other. And the other night here, shouts out to Hurt Ricks, holding it down with game night at seven. But if it's not him, it's you. What you over there chuckling for now? Near and dear to your heart, stuff you just found out today. No, not all of it. I just found <laughs> out today. You just said. I said after I researched and dug into how deep it was, but I've always known about downtown Columbia and what they did in the Waverly area. Um, I've always known about over there by Perry. Now there was some more stuff I found out, but I've always known what they did, what USC did to Booker T. Washington High School, too. Don't get it twisted. I love to keep telling you. You ain't got to tell me anything. I don't know. I may have to say, I may have to tell you a little bit now. Nah. You sure? I'm just going to state this fats to stunt, but I ain't going to front. Oh, well, that's a little different. Make black history every day. I don't need a month. Oh, Lord. Here he goes. Here he goes. Bars. You on one. You on one? Uh, more like seven. Oh, God. Help us all. So... Tonight, as you have already heard, I'm afraid. You're afraid. I have integrated my people into a burning house. What are you talking about? Words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, he ain't want to be talking about tonight, but he's one to bring up because he is a big piece of black history. Is it not a black history spotlight episode? It it is a black history spotlight episode. I was kind of looking at South Carolina's black history, well, most of Columbia, but you know what? He is absolutely one to spotlight. Um, South Carolina's black history is, is different. Um, especially when you look at where we are right now, where are we? I'm talking about living all over here in this area, not in the Blackwood area, when there was a lot of land that we owned in downtown Columbia before they ran 277 through it. You knew that was coming though. Well, I wasn't there, so I didn't know it was coming, but life does happen. So as you can already tell, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting conversation because we are talking about black history in Columbia, South Carolina, or you said spotlight black history in general. I mean, that's kind of what the flyer said that put out today. I thought it was all black history, seeing how the month is coming to it. We get an extra day. We do get an extra day this year, but. Shouts yeah. out to that 29th. So it is the Black History Month Spotlight, Mm -hmm. Black History, Columbia, South Carolina, Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. I didn't read the fine print. Oh, well, baby, you should always read the fine print. I just read the big print. Oh, no, read the little letters, too. So with all of that stuff, because I know I sent y'all a whole lot today. Did you get to go through any of it? Yeah, I read everything. You read all of it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's, wait, wait. I feel so special. You read it all. That's a lot. It was like three paragraphs, yo. It was like three pages. Okay. I read. I know. It was just, it's really exciting. It makes you feel good. Somebody reads everything you said. I don't just, you know, scroll all day. I do pick up a book. So I read. So there was a lot to read. So which area did you want to start with when we talk about Black history in Columbia, South Carolina, or just in general? And it better not be, I hope you get called. <laughs> it better not be. I hope you get caught. Um, I mean, I don't know. We can start downtown. Downtown with, with Columbia, the like Wall Waverly, Street. or you want to talk with uh, the Black Wall Street? Because the Black Wall Street was something to read. 
It's just the fact that people don't know we had one here. Everybody just thinks it was the one that got burned down. And what was that? Tulsa. Tulsa was the, the one of the, the most the infamous, one, right? right? It was one of the most famous. Um, but they don't talk about the black business district in downtown Columbia. What do you think ruined really messed up black history and stuff? What and, really and messed South, up and black South Carolina history? And, and, you know, across the nation. The better we got, the more prominent we became, the more threats to shut our families down we experienced. I think that's what messed a lot up. So there's um, one gentleman specifically I read about that lived on Pine Street, I think it was, in Five Points area. Gilmore, if I think, if I think it is named correctly, it's a little pink house where he had... You know the color of the house. I do. It's a little pink house. You pass the house all the time if you've been downtown, but you just don't pay attention. Um he had uh, two liquor stores. He owned um, a photo shop. He owned like four or five businesses. Very prominent black man in Columbia, South Carolina. First thing you remember that man owning his two liquor stores. Because it pointed it out. Um, but the thing that threw me, well, D said we left the hood. But the thing that threw me about his situation That's was, what messed us up, D. We left the hood. It wasn't a hood back then, though. What threw me about his story was... Out of all the businesses he owned and everything that he was doing, when he started helping black people vote, they threatened to financially ruin him and generations to come. So he had to stop. I mean, they did that, like giving us our 40 acres in a meal. So that wasn't really. But it made people stop. Like before you tear down my house, I got to stop fighting for what I think I'm fighting for. So what were you really fighting for? You mean in like Black History, what you really fighting for? What you mean? I'm just saying, if you gonna if they threaten you and you stop, are you really fighting for it? Or was you right fighting for profit? No, you still no, fight. I'm saying because may he, may he find a good job soon. Callan Kaepernick didn't stop kneeling because he was fighting for what he believed in. He risked his livelihood for that. So was the dude really risking his life? I'm just fucking around, man. Nah, that was fucked up what they did. So I'm just I'm just being funny. Samuel, I, I, just, I just wanted to play devil's advocate right quick because it's a real one. Like, like Sharon, me and Sharon had a very big conversation earlier about South Carolina in history, which I'm glad you logged in tonight because I really want to talk about C.A. Johnson, not just talk about Booker T. Washington, that was a very prominent um, all black school in Columbia, South Carolina during the civil rights era that shut down when they desegregated schools. See, that's the problem right there. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off, but I feel that's, that's the problem. Integrating schools to make us us feeling we need to be in school with them. I think that's what messed us all up. Unpopular opinion. I don't normally share because it's not always a good one. You don't think? But Go I, ahead. Go ahead. I believe when they... So when you had schools different, um, and I think I have actually have a picture of that. This was... These were your guidance department back then. Yeah. These were the teachers that looked at you and said, hey... Ian's an outstanding writer. Ian's an outstanding mathematician. Ian would do good in these positions. And they put you where your gift would be. And they put us in positions where you saw groundbreaking things happen. I do believe that when they allowed us into schools, I think they changed the... When we integrated schools. When we integrated schools, they changed the curriculum. And when they changed the curriculum, they dumbed us down. Um Booker T. Washington, even though the school itself was not operable, USC bought the school. So integration. Well, they didn't buy it for integration. They bought the no, school no, no, and I'm turned it to football about, dorms. I'm talking about integration is what messed us up. Oh, well, it, it changed us drastically. I believe we got dumber. I'm just, I don't even know if we got dumber. I just felt like all the, the writing positions and the mathematician positions where you were the head of the math club or, you know, the editor of the school paper, when you integrate and like, you can barely be a writer now. Does that make sense what I'm saying? They took it away from you. They did. They so, did. So I feel like that's one of the biggest things we made the mistake of doing was integrating schools. It changed a lot. Do you think they changed a lot in South Carolina because of that? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A lot of brilliant people. Look, Booker T. Washington, the man you just named had his own all his own businesses and stuff. It's some by stuff that came out of Booker T. Washington. By integrating them neighborhoods and making us being like, nah, you went from, it's like being... Uh, eighth grader in Did middle school. I think he's asking where you went to school. I'm trying to figure out who we talking about went to school. Coach, you got to emphasize like which young man that went to school. The which young school are we talking about? High school. I went to the view. Don't don't brag about Ridgeview. 
Just, <laughs> I, think, I think the girls and boys are playing the championship game this evening, just so you know. Went they the, are. They are in Florence view, playing the game. game. But I'm just saying, like, that man you just said, he went from being an eighth grader, you know, in middle school where you the top to becoming a freshman where you the bottom of the barrel now when they integrated neighborhoods and schools and all that stuff. I feel like that was detrimental to the advancement of our people. Now, it didn't stop us because a lot of this world runs off inventions, you know, invented by people in my pigmentation. But I think we could have been so much further had we not fought so hard to integrate with them. Oh, Coach, he went to Ridgeview. He didn't go northeast with us. No, too smart not with me. That. Too smart for northeast. Child, don't get me started. It's Black History Month, and I don't want to blast black men. But listen, um, I do agree that Booker T. Washington believed that the talented 10 with um, only ones that should go off to school all the others should get trades. So not everybody, which, I mean, I'm not saying that he's wrong, but not everybody's built for school. Trades were serious. And Booker T. Washington High School taught a lot of trades. There were, yeah. it's almost like Hayward. It was a lot of schools with Once cosmetology. It, it taught them trades. There was a lot of pictures plumbing. of that. They like did. They cosmetology, taught them barber school, mechanic. They taught them all at this school. So when we integrated with the other schools, they took that knowledge and skills set away from us. That's what I'm saying. We had to fight to become a mechanic again. Like, bro, we knew how to change all before before we were seven. We did. Sharon, I said that. I said USC bought the school after it closed, but they made it football dorms. They didn't even leave it up. Like, it's gone. C.A. Johnson is one of the only all black prominent or prominently black schools that's left right now. That's a historical, which needs to be listed as a historical <laughs> monument. Not a historically, because half these schools. Well, now they, they all predominantly well. black, but. <laughs> C.A. Johnson sure holds too. a different level of history when it comes to black history in the Columbia area. Yeah, Johnson's pretty cool. Hey, hey, what, there's what? a lot of people checking in right now. I see Sharon, I see Lisa, I see Tish, I see Coach Javis, I see... Y'all please chime in with y'all black history facts, too. I know. Don't tell I Sharon that she's a historian for John, for C.A. Johnson. Listen, I'm trying man, to tell you. I, I try to tell you, even though I was getting other subjects, history is my favorite one. Me and Sharon had a real good conversation, too, about this group here that you see on the screen. It's a whole swim team, but that's from Drew Park. And a lot of times you see a lot of older black people are tell you... Are they all melanated people? They are all us. And they were actually champion swimmers. Um, one of the coaches in this Duh. picture, <laughs> one of the coaches in this picture is Charles Bolden Sr. And I asked Sharon, was the Bolden Stadium down in that area live, um, named after Bolden Sr. or Junior? Because Junior became an astronaut, which is something that a lot of people that are older in Columbia know. But many of us don't know where we come from. Columbia is not full of just a bunch of dummies. We've come from some stuff. We still coming from some stuff. We still coming from some stuff. But okay, so that's another thing they're doing with our history. They're trying to take it out of schools now because they don't want people to know Coach Bolden. How many people, you know what I'm saying, were on swim teams who became astronauts right from your own town? They're trying to take black history out of schools today. And and Sharon, if I'm right about this one, uh oh. Perry and Bolden coaches were the first coaches, which is why they named that stadium at stadium after Bolden. Um, there's so many things we see every day, but like you said, they're taking the little bit of black history they teach because what we learned in Richland too is not what they learned in one and it's showing what Benedict is teaching. There's some South Carolina history they're teaching that we missed. I didn't learn some of this stuff until I was an adult. There's a lot I didn't learn until I was an adult. I didn't find out who Mansa Musa was to 2011. Oh, wow. Nothing I was taught. Nothing I was taught when I went to Ridgeview, when I went to Millis Tech, when I went to finish my bachelor. Nobody talked about this man. I had to find this out from my homeboy one day after we had finished having some adult libation. How does that make you feel as a parent? And we talk about a lot of stuff that they took out of schools that impact our children. But as a parent, knowing that they want to take the Honestly, little bit of black history they take in be, there. You want me to be 100% honest? I want you to fully be you. And it makes me feel up. like I'm, a, I'm racist. Because everything that comes to my house, my daughter can't play with no white baby dolls or Barbie dolls. And she don't know. She's just a kid having fun. But no, you're not bringing that into my house because you have to learn what they don't want you to learn. And I feel like I don't want them growing up hating anybody because of the color of their skin. But I push everything in my house black. I'm black, but black, but black, black, y'all. I will be honest. Growing <laughs> up, my grandma bought all kind of dolls in the house. When I had children, I moved different. But here's why. See? Not so much as a matter of you know, I didn't want them playing with the other ones, but I did want you to know that toys 
and different things that you had, you're good enough with your melanated skin exactly. to play with a toy that looks like you. That's all the ones you're good now. enough to watch a president that looks like you. You're good enough to have the ideology that what we choose to do, um, they have things that look like us. Like when I get into the business mind and I start moving, and I start building and accomplishing, you can do this too. Don't let nobody tell you because we black, we can't handle it. Just even with they toys. Absolutely. And I, I need to take that back because I don't feel I'm a race. I'm just real pro-black. And just because I'm pro-black don't make me anti-white. Let me see, Sharon. Let me Does see that what make I sense? can do for you. I do agree. I wholeheartedly agree. But I do. I want my babies to understand the, the brilliance and beautifulness of where they come from, who they come from. And it starts with people of my pigmentation. Sharon just asked me because she called in. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we, what we can do, Sharon? First time ever is we can send you the link to join this stream. I might let her try to call. I'm up. just. Let me see. You gonna really call the telephone? You gonna put your I mic am. to the phone? Sharon, let me see if I can hear you. Say something. No, what it is? I uh -uh, we got a call. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on <laughs> I didn't know on. I could do. Last it. week, last week we talked about iconic moments in hip hop. We talking about an iconic moment tonight on CTS <laughs> podcast. We have our first ever call in caller. Herc, I can't believe you missed this. I am enjoying it. All right, Sharon, go ahead. Okay. In co correction, it was Charles Bolden and W.G. Sanders that were the first football coaches of C.A. Johnson. You have several schools that are in the Columbia area that people don't know. They're named after black people that taught at C.A. Johnson. That's true. You have Edward E. Taylor Elementary, E.E. E. Taylor. Mm -hmm. He was a science teacher at Johnson. You have Samuel Hayward, Hayward Career Center. He was a math teacher and assistant principal at C.A. Johnson. You have um, Henry K. Weber, Weber Elementary, really down true. in the um, Lower Richland area. So it's a lot of people like George Elmore. George Elmore was the first black to be over a Democratic Party in Columbia, South Carolina, back in the 1930s. Is that now the, considered the Clyburn district? I know you said something about that earlier, too. No, it, it, back then they didn't have districts. Okay. It was just the Democratic Party, period, for blacks. What about good old V.V. Reed? Who's that behind? V.V. Reed is actually not, well, with Clyburn, Mr. Clyburn is originally from um, South South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um. That's not his district per se. I think that's District 79. So that was Senator John Scott, which Tamika Isaac Devine has it now. Shout out to Tamika. But um, Senator Clyburn was the first black to be majority whip. Thank you for that knowledge. I did not know any of that. Oh, she's a full fledged <laughs> historian for CA. I'm, listen, I'm I'm still <laughs> I'm still mind blown that we got a call in caller on our podcast. We actually had our first <laughs> okay, call in the night. I've never. <laughs> We've never had the call inside. So for you I, I got a call in tonight. Yeah, because I can't text that quick. <laughs> <laughs> Remember my eyesight. I had surgery today. I can't text that quick. That's but with, with Booker T. Washington, Booker T. Washington's first graduating class was in 1932, if I'm not mistaken. They correct. closed their doors in 1970. Sure did. And once they closed their doors, University of South Carolina bought that property. They sure but did. before they closed their doors, they had a, too many blacks because it was like the Arthur Town area, the um, Hopkins area. All of those people went to Booker T. So they built Johnson in 1948. It opened its doors in 1949. Its first graduating class was in 1950. And Crystal King B.L. Jeffcoat, that go to First Cavalry, was the president of that first senior class. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so Keenan was built on Pine, Pine Belt Road. The Belvedere section back in the 70s was predominantly white. Sure was. Keenan was built early. for them. They integrated in 1971, and the first black um, class president was my cousin, Gary Myers. Eau Claire was predominantly white. Columbia High used to be where Baptist Hospital stands now. They did not allow blacks to go to any of those schools. So that's why you only had Johnson and Booker T. Washington. Now, I kid you not. I did not know 
that um, I had no clue that Eau Claire was predominantly white. I've never known that. They didn't integrate until 1972, if I'm not mistaken. Johnson had white kids that attended back in the 70s. It had a good bit of white students at Johnson. In my graduating class in 1978, we had about 15 to 20. That was considered a lot? Huh? Was that considered a lot? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, because they came from the Belvedere area. Yep. Belvedere right now is predominantly okay. black. Johnson had a seventh grade and eighth grade also in the building. Oh, so they started from seventh because grade all the way through twelve. You didn't have Perry. And the only um, junior high was Carver Junior High in that area. And then they started when they built like Saxon Homes, um, Jagger's Terrace. Those were the only apartments in that area. And, and Gonzalez Gardens. Gonzalez Gardens was built for the military. It was not built for blacks. It was built for the military in the 1950s. I did not know so that. They, yeah, so their kids went to Johnson too before they built Flora. Man, you you learn something, you you learn learn something new every day. day, but a lot of times we think that history started where we are. Downtown Columbia carries so much history that I I appreciate hearing about Dr. King, about Malcolm X. Um, one of the facts that we learned earlier was that he visited one of the schools here. Um, and I don't think it was Booker T because it was over there actually in that Benedict area. But the part that we don't learn a lot about is what we see in our own backyard. And the sick thing is we pass these places every single time we travel downtown mm -hmm. Columbia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wheeler Hill area. The Wheeler Hill, Hill area down by where Finley Park and stuff is. That was predominantly black. Man, you, you definitely schooling yeah. me this evening. If you get the book, A True Likeness by Samuel Richard Roberts, it has all the photography in there of Columbia in the, um, in the black community from 1920 up until 1930. Sharon, stop yeah. right there by Richard Roberts and go back for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. Tell them about what they found under his house. Because then you mentioned one of the facts about him being a... Um, I didn't know that, Jamal. You mentioned about um, Richard Roberts being the photographer here and all the negatives he had. Tell them about what happened with those negatives. Back in the 1980s, they, um, someone from USC, I think it was his great, great, great grandson. I'm not sure. But his son, Beverly, and his one of his daughters was still living in the family house. They had negatives. And the negatives were made out of glass. Okay, exactly. They what is had glass negative? negatives that were preserved the under pictures, the house. You know, you take pictures and the little negatives used to come out. Like a little okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. She's on my picture so negatives. Once they went up under there and they got it, they started asking people in the Columbia area, do you know these people? Do you know these people? Um, Dr. Henry T. Marshall identified some people. Um, Tony Manigault, um, um, used to be Manigault Hurley's funeral home. His mother is in that book. She was one of the affluential, affluential Blacks in Columbia. And you had pictures of people who were former slaves that could not be identified. You had boxers. You had the 4-H uh, club from 1930 something in that book. That book has so many pictures. The Artemis family is in that book. Um, the first interracial family is in that book with a white father and black mother. And what's uh, the name the of this book again? Clarkson family is in that book. He asked you what's the name of the book, Sharon? A True Likeness. Like Richland County was estimated to have a majority black population since the 1790s. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that, um, D just asked us on air and I'm going to actually speak on that. Jamal, that's Sharon Hanks. Um, I always call Sharon Hanks, my God mama, but she's also the step coach that we had when we were in high school, where we learned a lot about South Carolina, about Columbia, about who was who, how we got introduced to a lot of prominent people. Um, Sharon's like my little historian. <laughs> uh, when I got questions about anything, I go to Sharon. Um, but D, you posted on here about the hospital that um, blacks were not allowed to go to on Hardin Street. Sharon, you probably remember this. When Obama first was getting elected, when he we didn't even elected, we were voting. Um, I went downtown to vote and I was downtown on Hardin um, where people go pay their taxes and all that stuff. At, but the line was from the voting registration place down there all the way around down the um, railroad tracks by that dentist office and all that stuff down there. The line was ridiculous. But by I was Hampton Street. by Hampton Street. I was blessed to be in line with this lady who probably was in her 90s. Um, we all had to wait. But she took her time and she spoke to us this day. So she was talking to us about that. This is why I'm answering your question, D. She told us she lived in Forest Acres. Well, she lived outside of Forest Acres. But she said back then that which we now go to vote, pay taxes and do all those different things um, was a hospital for older white women. That was for older county people. hospital for blacks. Not that one. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, not that one. Okay. The one that was all for white people that blacks could work in, but we could mm -hmm. not go to. And the black women who worked at that hospital would literally live way down. They would get dropped off in forest acres and they would walk yep. up yep. to go to this. They walk up Taylor. They walk up all that walk down there by Allen and they'd walk to work, but they would be dropped off two miles from work. So they take the bus, get dropped off two miles from work and they'd walk to a hospital to take care of people in a place they could never go to and have mm -hmm. to walk back two miles. And she talked about how scary it was walking back to that bus stop because anything could happen to them while they were cutting through during that time frame. And I mean, you could hear a pin drop outside for the amount of us that just sat and listened to her as she talked to us about how many places downtown Columbia Blacks could work, but could not receive services from, but they were being dropped mm -hmm. off two and three miles to walk to get to their mm -hmm. jobs. And they were going to work faithfully in places yeah, that we now had, are in all day long. Had. And it's so ironic now, now the WIC office and all that's there. When when you talk about black history and you talk to somebody who's lived through that and the civil rights, like I tell my students, somebody in your family was a slave. Somebody in your family lived through Reconstruction, Jim Crow, civil rights, and all this. But at eight years old, coming from Philadelphia and down to the South. I was the only black in my elementary school in Sumter. And that's pushing it. That's pushing being it. Being the only black. When Dr. King got killed, I was eight years old. They came, they didn't have loudspeakers or anything like that. They came to the classroom and they said, and I quote, all the colored children have to move. Not the white children. All the colored children. The colored children was only me. And you so ain't got I that had much to color go out. Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> I had to go out. And when I saw my mom, Miss Davis, walking she down the street Davis. from Lincoln High School, which is now Sumter High, with four National Guards behind uh, around her to come pick me up from school so the white people that were standing out there wouldn't harm me. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, I had spit in my hair. They were throwing stuff at us. And this my is on the day Dr. Davis. King was killed? Uh, yeah. This is on uh, that day. He, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, yes. I know you old as dust, but keep going. Yeah, 1968, Ian. 1968, I was eight years old. I'm I'm just talking about the so, treatment of the on that I day. saw racism. I saw integration. I saw all of that firsthand. And yes, it does leave an everlasting imprint in your on your life. It does because then you, the older you get, you start realizing, you know what's what. 
But that same year, I had a teacher, Miss Cox. And to say I will forever be grateful for that white lady, I couldn't get a math problem right. She kept hitting my hand with the ruler. She kept hitting my hand with the ruler. And she told me, excuse my French, quote, do you want to be a dumb nigger all your life? Unquote. I was eight years old. Had never heard that term before. Went home and told my, my mom. My mom said, what did you say back? I said, I didn't say nothing. She said, good, thank you, because you would have been hanging from the tree. To this very day, I thank that lady, because that's what I'm not. I'm that's what I'm not. And she must have been 100 years old when she taught me here. She must have been. And you talk about, yeah, and people don't realize that your mother was, Dr. Davis was um, an instructor at Benedict College for a very long time. And she was the PE, um, co PE teacher and basketball coach at Morris College back in the 60s. My dad was the first black to integrate Metropolitan Insurance Company in something. It is, it's just a lot that People don't, people don't know about Columbia and the surrounding areas, but once you learn it, you you begin to appreciate Columbia. You begin to understand Columbia. You begin to realize, okay, Paul Benjamin, 1954 graduate of C.A. Johnson, he was in Do the Right Thing. He was in Hoodlum. He was an actor. He graduated from Benedict College. His parents were slaves. They died. His brother, who was a pastor, raised him. He attended Johnson. J. Anthony Brown, class of 1971, attended Johnson. Sequence, the first black female rap group, graduated from Johnson in 1979. Charles Bowden Jr. graduated from Johnson in the 60s. Shouts out to the astronaut. Right. So you got so many, I.S. Levy Johnson, the first black that was ever appointed to the legislature, legislative um, conference since Reconstruction. You've got so many people that from Booker T. and Johnson, the only two black schools that were so prominent in the Columbia area, as well as their family, a lot of people don't know it unless they are a Dr. King or Rosa Parks or whatever, whatever. But these people made significant impacts on the civil rights era in Columbia. I don't think we pay attention enough to <clears throat> the spaces that we pass in Columbia every day and how powerful mm -hmm. and and amazing those places are. We see these houses and we're like I'm they're saying, run dude. down and they're torn down, but you don't realize the history behind them. What are some of the most amazingly historic places downtown Columbia, Sharon, that we take for granted? But except for, and I know Sid Johnson's gonna be number one, you say, but places that we take for granted that we legitimately need to truly appreciate for the history it holds because it's the reason why we are who we are. The building next to Baptist Hospital. Mm -hmm. I knew that was that coming. That used to be a church. I knew that was coming. That one, um, the Wheeler Hill area, which is Finley Park and all that area. Uh, Celia Saxon, Saxon Holmes. It was named after her. Reverend uh, Henley. Something was named, uh, uh, the apartments that used to be down the street from C. E. Johnson, which is now houses, was named after him. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Jaggers, who was a prominent black man in Columbia, used to be Jaggers Terrace down by USC. Arthur Town, all that down where USC was, used to be called Arthur Town. And it was all black. What's that area, Sharon, over there by Benedict College, where the, down by Perry? It begins with the B. Um, T.S. Martin? Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It begins with a B. A B. It's the uh, the um, the Kendleton town. The Kendall town. The Kend Kenilworth. Yes, yes, yes. That area where uh, it used to be a white um, a white man had it was a plantation, and when he died, they divided it up into subdivisions, and it became mm -hmm. a prominent black neighborhood 
in um Columbia. Oh, God, I can't think of it that's right it. Now. That's it. Um it's um Barmaville area. Barnaville where... Estates. That's it. Actually, and that was big. Barnaville Estates mm-hmm. didn't come into play until the late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. Look at D. Yeah. No Bar- and that's right down from, from, from Johnson. It is. Um First Calvary Baptist Church. Yes. First Calvary Baptist Church was a shoot off of Calvary. First Calvary Church. Of Calvary Baptist Church. Then from First Calvary you had a shoot off of Zion Canaan. Mm-hmm. Okay. You you know what I'm talking about because you I've you been a member of both of them. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so you you had you had different people who did things in Columbia. Ian, write this down. Uh-uh. Um, Let me get my notepad out. <laughs> oh yeah, get your notepad out because what I'm going to give you is going to show you every single yearbook at every single school that was built back in the day. Oh yeah, let me get that. www. Got you. Dot Richland County Digital Library. Dot com. You're going to see Cardinal Newman in the 70s. You're going to see Booker T. Washington. You're going to see A.C. Floor from the 70s. You're going to see C.A. Johnson from 1950 to 1971. You're going to see all kind of books, even the elementary schools, some elementary schools that were no are no longer listed, like Lakewood Elementary in West Columbia. Herc said to ask you, Sharon, about Black Bottom. Black Bottom. <laughs> where was Black Bottom at? Ron, where was Black Bottom? Uh oh, she had to phone a friend. <laughs> that Kendleton area, while she's getting that information. Was okay, Ron. Black Bottom was, was off the of River Drive, Lucius Road. And why did they call it Black Bottom? Because that's where all the blacks are. <laughs> <laughs> You had, you had a few white people sprinkled in an air, but that's why it was called Black Bottom, and it got that name because of white people, because they said was well, nothing but a bunch of <clears throat> down there. Black Bottom. It's, they have some me. some wild names and some crazy ways uh-huh. how we obtain some stuff. But but do you do you realize that with with history, how we came up with all these. Eloquent names for blacks. Yep. Okay, because of Queen Isabella, who was eleven years old, owned slaves. What, what's the what's the color name for black Spanish? Negro. When they came over to the Western civilization, it went from Negro to Negra to Nigger. Then we went from Nigger to colored. Then we went from colored to black. Then we went from black to Negro and went from <laughs> Negro to African American, where we stand now. Shannon now, I wants you to tell all the secrets right now. D said, tell them why we don't go across the river in West Columbia. Because back then. <laughs> <laughs> They're about to make you tell it all. I learned my lesson with that one now. I learned my lesson Listen, with that one. You were not welcome <laughs> if you had melanin in your skin. Sure, when not. Were, you was not welcome. And people are still leery going over there sure. to Lexington and West Columbia. That's when them lights come on. And, and you don't go at night. Nope. Nope. You don't do it. Sundown. That's what it's called. Sundown. You better be on your side of town. Red Fox Croft Skating Ring was the only skating ring for blacks. And that was by Richland Northeast. Which sure is was. Now, it was right across the street from um, that dentist's yeah, office. Yeah, it's, it's a doctor's office now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the only skating ring we had. Blacks couldn't go anywhere. We had the teen club on Fort Jackson. And that's where blacks could go and party as teenagers and listen to the Soul Dimensions and all these um, bands that were made up of neighborhood guys and girls. And we ain't talking about the 1800s. No, we talking about the eight nineteen seventies and eighties. Yep. We talking about nineteen seventies and eighties. Yeah, and the, and if you did go to some to somewhere, you had to know who you was going, or 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 you were invited. 
we lived in Sumter, and we were the only mm. black family that could eat at this restaurant called Big Jim's because my dad and the um, owner were good friends. Shouts out to Dr. Davis. Still, we still had to eat in the back. So Pops was good friends with Big Jim. Pops are good friends with a whole lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jim Davis. <laughs> What did he say, Crystal? Tell my pop was good friends with Big Jim. <laughs> Jim Davis was good friends yeah, with a lot of people. Big, my dad's name was Big Jim too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so but we still couldn't eat in the midst of the white folk. We had a table in the back where you were not that cons that, that conspicuous for them to see you. Oh, so y'all had VIP. We had NIP. NIP. Just trying to light that um, mood just now. I know that you were definitely talking about the Kendleton area. You're talking about how it was with Two Notch Road, Elmwood, um, mm -hmm. Beltline. But I don't think we um, have heard a lot about, and we don't hear a lot about, but you did mention the Lower mm -hmm. Richland area. A lot of history. Johnny Hopkins. Great deal, of, great deal of history. Great deal. They caught, the Lower Richland area caught more, and I say more, more H-E double hockey sticks than the city area. Because you had to come from out that country up to the city. And Blacks wasn't blacks weren't really appreciated at all back then. At all. You could be friends with Mr. Mr. Johnny Johnny um Lupa Dupa, but you were still black. Mr. Johnny Lupa Dupa would say, Oh, Ian is a good old boy. But Ian Oof. could not do what Mr. Johnny Lupa Dupa could do. That boy makes skin crawl. That just made my skin crawl. <laughs> hey, what he Ooh. said that that good old boy that call him a boy made his skin crawl, but it's real. It, it still is. You go to the the rural parts of Mississippi, yo boy, come here. When I did, when I went down there, my first time going to Mississippi, this man, this white boy called an older man, yo boy, come here. And I look, and my husband, God rest his soul, looked at me, told me, don't you open your mouth, keep walking. Because I was getting ready to say, that ain't no boy. That's a grown. Don't you open your mouth. He said, let's get in the car and let's, let's keep it moving. And that was in the 90s. Do you have a lot oh. of people from C.A. Johnson <laughs> during the 1920s and 1949 who had businesses in that, um, that black business district that they talk about off of Washington Street? Yeah, I can't think of their names right off that, but that would be that book. That would be in that book. I say that I'm because sure. um, the photographer you mentioned, Richard Roberts, had a shop there. Um, mm -hmm. The Matthew J. Perry, his law office and things were down there. Bowlware, mm -hmm. I see names where um, Victory Savings Bank, Capital Theater, Owen and Paul Taylors. There's so many names, and ironically, you hear these names in churches and local local people that you see even um the news broadcaster sierra talked about her family being extremely prominent in the waverly sierra. area sierra they our family was extremely um prominent in the waverly area when that yeah. was in its prime during that time it i say that to say we always hear about the struggles we had but there's not that time frame that they talk about between 1920 and 1949 even after that in the 70s when blacks were thriving but then they sold us this dream over here and they sold us into these 30 year that. mortgages and, and made well, us give up land and all kinds of They don't stuff. want you to know that black people no, ever thrive. No, my cousin Gary Meyer Sr., AKA Piccolo, he owned a gas station in that area. He had owned a gas station in that area. And the movie theater you're talking about is right across the street from Allen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. With Allen and Benedict, the history of that. Benedict was founded by a white lady, Rutherford Zendel. Her name was her first name is Bathsheba, and she was of the Baptist convention, but she was white. Allen was founded by the AME, and they were both founded for former slaves to attend, and they were trade schools as well, just like Tuskegee, just like all the other schools. They were trade schools. Um, tell them we're rising. Is a documentary done by, uh, I think it's Nelson something, but Mandela. Tell Them We're Rising, We Are Rising, is a documentary of 
all the HBCUs in the United States. Very interesting. There's a lot of tours that you can take. Um, they're called Historic Columbia, but you can mm -hmm. get tours. You can do them online. It's better to do them when you ride around with them. Um, but they'll show you all the historic places in Lower Richland. There's mm -hmm. one in Waverly, Lower Waverly. Mm -hmm. There's one that shows you all of the prominent houses of lawyers, dentists, doctors, and all prominent Blacks. Um, there's one that will take you to all the stores from the Black Business District and show you. And people are always looking for things you can do with your children right mm -hmm. here in places we don't even recognize. Take them downtown, get on the trip, and actually go see what's going on. D said Claflin is the oldest. Uh, no, it's not. It's change state. Uh, sorry, D. For HBCUs? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, I don't, I don't... Sorry, D. I always tell Sharon she was born like the 1910s, so I can't tell you. She so, Sharon, let me ask you this question. Just being there on that god-awful day um, mm -hmm. of the President Martin Luther King till today, how have you... I don't know. How, what's the word I'm trying to find? How do you feel like all this integration and all this stuff has altered or shaped your life and from all what you've seen to today, do you think Columbia's in a better place now? Or do you think it was better when they were starving in the you know, 70s and 80s? It's, it's, it's a, it's, it was better back then. I moved to Columbia when I was 12. And during that time, Blacks had more outlets than we had for us. For us, that white people wouldn't dare come to. Like I said, the teen club on Fort Jackson, um, house parties, um, the skating rink. We had so many outlets that Blacks had solely for themselves. And when integration came, all of those went out of business. So you think integration was a bad thing, too? To be honest with you, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Because I was too light for blacks and too black for white. You're still too light. I didn't like it. And, you know, if you were half breed, you didn't fit in anywhere. And that you, was you big in Lauren Richmond. You just, you just sat graded. That's all. You just sat graded. On so, the tour, they talk about that in Laura Richland. That's heavy in Laura Richland. How many slave masters slept with slaves? And you had a tremendous amount of mulattoes in the Laura Richland area. And that was hard area. for them. And it's still There's like a that. Building down there that's still standing a house. It's a plantation, a formal plantation. Like you go on the something. Child, oh, you get well, down well, in the woods, you see a whole lot of stuff <clears throat> in Laura Richland. And just think. Where the township auditorium is, that's the Woodrow Wilson house. The slaves that was in that mm -hmm. area. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a, yeah. I think that's the, that's his childhood home. So you know they had slaves left and right, up and down the street. Y'all saw they had. A lot of these neighborhoods that we see now were slave owner lands that were broken <laughs> up into subdivisions, mm -hmm. and then we made them prominent areas and houses, but. They were plantation lands. We we walk mm -hmm. on the same land all the time. Um, do and now I will say this: you work in education and you have worked with children, God, for as long as I've known you. Um, do you feel that the lack of education for who we are and where we've come from makes a difference in how these kids act? Not those people. Those people. Yes, it does, and it also lack the the difference is lack of education you're getting at home. Hmm. We can't do it all. We only got your kids for 7.5 hours a day. We can't do it all. And then with the State Department of Education and the U.S. Department of Education, everybody trying to cut this out, cut that out, they don't want anyone to know the god-awful truth. That's what I was so saying therefore, our kids, let me give you an example. Students. Miss Hanks, when were you born? 1960. Dang, you was a slave? <laughs> that's not really? funny. That's, that's so not I said funny, 1960, Crystal. not 1860. The difference in knowing the decades. No, they don't know about that. Sharon giving y'all the clean come? questions. These kids ask her some stuff. When she get home, she cussed the whole ride. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that, like, that's not, that's not funny. Because the fact that they don't know. 
They don't know. You'd be they surprised. Because they're a trying young, to take a it out. A young lady told me yesterday, I only, I've never heard of Harriet Tubman. Mm. And everybody in the class looked at her like, what? I hope you get caught. I said, wait a minute. So you knew about Rosa Parks? Yeah, that she was she was the first woman to sit on the bus um, wouldn't get off the bus. No, she wasn't. The actual first woman was from the Richland area. See what I'm saying? When Sid said Rosa Parks ain't do nothing but sit her ass down, people got <laughs> mad, but right. he was just <laughs> telling the truth. Sheriff is saying that crazy then, stuff for the long time. Rosa Parks, there was a young lady named Claudette Colvin. Oh, she was 15. And pregnant and wouldn't give her seat up on the bus. And this was like a year before Rosa Parks. But because Rosa Parks worked for Dr. Vivian T Vivian Thomas or Thomas Vivian at the NAACP, that's the only reason why she got notoriety. She was the secretary for the NAACP. Sharon, one thing I want you to tell them too, especially when we got 10 minutes to roll here, as much history as you have for C.A. Johnson and as C.A. Johnson being the overflow school for Booker T. Washington, how hard of a fight is it for you and your staff at Johnson to even keep Johnson rolling these days? When you got libertarians who look at places that are prime real estate property, it's hard as hell. I'm the president of the C.A. Johnson Alumni Association. And right now, I'm working with the alumni to get a historical marker placed. Oh, I see that. So they can't bother C.A. Johnson. Well, good luck it's with that hard. Because they keep tearing up the neighborhood. They keep doing the regentrification in the neighborhood, which is taking our black children out northeast, out southeast, out Lexington from the city. It's hard. It's real hard. And it is it's so hard to the point where you shake your head and you want to cry. Because After tonight, you challenge every, I mean, everybody. We've had a lot of people chime in. Sharon, you should see the amount of kids that, and I'm saying your babies, kids from Northeast and stuff, like Kevin's out here right now talking about his grandfather helping build Eau Claire, um, how his grandmother, Eau Claire was a white school. He verified that he just about what you said and said, you know, his grandmother lived across the street from Eau Claire and they had to walk most of the way to take city buses downtown to go to black Booker schools because they had to go to Booker T. Washington. I really wish that as much as we do talk about um, the main, I call them the Fab Five, the, the Malcolm X, you know, Martin Luther King, the ones they always teach you to dress up like in school and put them all on the wall, that we mm -hmm. really talked about the local people who did things as well, because there's a lot of us who don't even realize a lot of our histories in our own family. You're tied to a bloodline of survivors. They don't want yes. you to know that. But they can't <laughs> shut us up with all this internet access we have. You may not have it in the school, you, you, but no, we see, have an access. But see, you're saying they can't shut us up because of the internet access, but if you don't know what to look up, they've already shut you up. They did. Like, I have, did. Have, you're right. Ian. Half this you're information right. that Sharon gave me tonight, I knew nothing about it. I'm telling I'm you. I'm just saying, I didn't even know to go look that up because I don't know what to type in Google as a search. Um, D made a comment, <laughs> Sharon, that really would hit you from, for, especially from my family history, from my children's family, I should say. Um, Reed Street area, all those shotgun houses over there by Benedict. Benedict mm -hmm. bought them and made them offices, they but to. they're all shotgun houses that a lot of black professors. Used to live in. Used to live in. Mm -hmm. They did they a lot. Live nowhere else. They couldn't live nowhere else. Um, I cannot think of her name, and but we used to call her T. They had a lot of black businesses. They had a lot of black businesses. Black barbershops. Black, black barbershops. Yeah, they had a lot of black businesses. But as society progressed, the worst thing that could have ever happened to society was technology. <laughs> That's the worst thing that could have ever happened to society. Because now you don't have to look up anything. It's right there. Boop, there you go. Sharon, can you, you tell them about how Dr. About Davis anything. and um, T and all them from way back when used to tell us how, even though Benedict was an HBCU, 
how many times they used to have to sneak black children across the fence to get them into that school because the whites would try to kill them before they got into the gate? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you kind of just told us. No, it's a, yeah. if that story will make your skin crawl. Every story I mean, it, from the past was, makes my skin crawl. They didn't appreciate that lady. That's, I can't think of if she was last name. The lady that founded Benedict, they didn't like that. Now, when she founded that, Benedict, I, I didn't. Was she doing it as a a good thing or was it a, uh, I want to separate y'all from the white kids? Good thing. She was a philanthropist. Okay. Good thing. Like I said, look up. Tell them we are rising. Yeah, I, I wrote. Listen, I got. I yeah. got. Uh, look that up. Hold on. It, every single black historical black college was founded by white people. Yeah. Spellman is named after a white lady. Morehouse is named after had white people. A, a white president back in the early, uh, back in, when they first opened, and he was so controlling. He in his mind, he said blacks were sexually uncontrollable. So he had to keep them in a tight spot. Boys couldn't talk to girls. They couldn't walk on the same side of the street. They couldn't do this. They couldn't do that. So in their minds, that's what it was. Every single historical... Booker T. Washington, for example, he was appointed to run Tuskegee. But did you know that Booker T. Washington, his his sale, sales pitch to the white people was we will work for you for a minimal wage. We will still do your laundry. We will still clean your houses, but for a small fee. Then he goes to the black people and say, you need to work for these white people who give you a little bit of money. I didn't know that until I watched Tell Them We're Rising. And a lot of black white people were saluting him and yay, yay. And the black people was looking at him like, what did you just say? But that's what he did. That's what so a lot of the stories people. that you learned. Um, D made a point just now, Sharon, in the comments. He said, We need to talk to our families. Plus, we don't mm -hmm. eat together anymore. That's when yep. the stories um, and history information was told. When you learned about the history of your family from Philly to Columbia, where did you yep. and your family really sit down and get that insight? Like where they really schooled you on the do's and do nots and where we came from? When we would take, we would take that pilgrimage to Virginia, which was called down south if you were in Jersey, New York, Philly. That was down south. From the south, Virginia was up north. But when we would go to U.S. number one, Two Notch Road, where Josephine and William Broad Davis, my grandparents, lived on their farm, and all the aunts and uncles, their, their brothers and sisters, and everybody would come. My mother, Sarah Hanks, Mr. Davis, all of us would be there for family reunion. That's where we sat out in grandma and granddaddy's yard. And we learned that grandma's great-grandfather was taught to read by his slave master. His church is still standing in Manson, North Carolina. We learned that my grandfather was an undertaker, William Davis. We didn't know that. So at this point, my book is almost done. It's going to be another year, but it's called Amessa Greens, the Coleman's from Mecklenburg County, Virginia. And I've done research back to the 1700s. And on my grandmother's side, and on her mother's side, I've gone back as far as the 1600s to Glasgow, Scotland, where her people, on her daddy's side, which was her mother's employer, came from. Mm. But that's how we learned everything. Even though we, we, we was kind of dingy back then as kids, we didn't know what they were talking about. But once you sit there and you hear, you hear them say, well, great grandma, grandma Lizzie. And I had never heard that lady's name. Grandma Lizzie was five foot 10, very fair skin, long curly hair down to her thighs. She had to get permission to marry my, my, my great grandfather. I have the note written in 1907 for them to marry. That's how we learned it. People don't sit. 
great grandmama is 54 in these days. <laughs> They, and they're not having these conversations. They're not. No. Many of us are learning our stuff from ancestry, and you're no. finding it's out it. all for entertainment purposes. Only. Ancestry tell you some stuff because oh, ancestry that, is how I found my stuff from Scotland. That, that don't. Okay, tell but the truth. familysearch.org is another site that's free, and it gives you more detail. It does. It does. My mother, Sarah Hanks, is 89. She'll be 90 this year. She is the only living person out of her family. Less. Only living one. Her baby sister just died February of last year. We're losing the ancestors that we have access to right now. My grandma's the last sibling of her mother's eight children. After mm -hmm. my grandmother's gone, all eight children, her, grandma, her mama, her daddy, all of them are gone. Teeny, the memories of all of that information in Huntsville goes with them. Exactly. We do not have these conversations. I exactly. only have what grandma told us. And that's all I got is what my mom is telling me now. Ian, look up the Coleman Brothers Quartet. Okay, she giving you all kinds of <laughs> And you think I ain't going to read them? You better believe I am. <laughs> oh, I know. Mm. The Coleman Brothers mm. Quartet mm. was a black gospel quartet from Newark, New Jersey. Sharon, they want you to repeat the websites that you said again. Richland County Digital Library dot com. Yes. <laughs> you got to write that down. I got to yes. tell him we're rising. We got the Coleman Brothers Quartet and I got a true likeness. Let me tell you something. History lesson learned tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But the, the Coleman Brothers Quartet, Ian, those are my cousins. See, that's going to be the first one I read now. <laughs> <laughs> and they sung at Theodore Roosevelt's funeral. They sung His Eye is on the Sparrow. You can also pull their music up on YouTube. Y'all heard it here first. CTS We've Iconic been Evening. First rocking. calling with Miss Sharon. Just thank you so much. Listen, Sharon. I, I, I don't know how to say thank you enough. <laughs> I called Sharon, y'all. This is no lie. We I had called two Sharon pages of like, notes to read off tonight. I, I had my to... notes, and Wait. I called Sharon. I was like, Ma, let me ask you about this, this, and this. And she was like, write this name down. Richard Robert. <laughs> and I was like, who? And she was like, the photographer. And I was like, oh, what do you do? And she went through the whole thing, and I was like, listen. After you go to the doctor, get home, right? <laughs> and I'm going to need you online at 7. I didn't know she was going to call in, but I knew she would chime in. Listen, this is this is black history being made tonight. But I love this conversation. I love the When she said, I'm a C.A. Johnson historian, that's downtown Columbia. But the knowledge and stuff that you dropped tonight, you lit a fire in a Thank whole you. lot of people that needed to be lit. You made people realize, let me check my family. Let mm -hmm. me check myself. Let me check Dentsville. Let me check. Blythewood. Let me check Kershaw. Let me check Sumter. Let me check West Columbia. Let me check downtown Columbia. Let me sit down and pick up the phone and stop laughing or not talking to these older people, but really sit with them for hours and understand who we are, where we came from. So I can talk to my kids because these kids don't appreciate nothing because we don't tell them nothing. Right. Take a ride see, downtown. You, in order for a black person to figure out where they're going, they got to know first where they came from. Yes, Lord. They got to know the stock where they came from because everybody started at a stock and whether that stock was on a plantation or on the boat. Majority of the slaves, it was Appreciate three slave ports. Annapolis, Maryland, Louisiana, New Orleans, and Charleston, this South Carolina. 45% of the slaves came in through the port of Charlestown. Yeah. So um, you don't I'm know if your, your family now. came in through that. So I'm running the sites back through. Um, there's a lot of people coming in asking questions. Wanda, let me tell you, Wanda Stringfellow, I know you're watching. Shout out to my cousin at Chester. I got to send you a whole bunch of stuff. I was trying to make sure that the Cunningham I saw in my bloodline wasn't the one in your bloodline so that we had mixed bloodlines. And I went and found a whole lot of family stuff. I have your grandmother and grandfather's entry when they wrote in Lawrence County in 1937 when they got married. So I'm going to send you that as soon as we get off this. Um, but definitely check what she said. Check localhistory.richlandlibrary.com. Please check the Richland County Digital Library.com. We ask Family you to check. Family Pilot Search. Family Pilot Search. 
dot org dot com dot org yeah that's that's run by the latter day of saint of, of saints and it's free family pilot search family pilot mm -hmm. search <clears throat> Definitely check. We'll post it on the conversations at suit sites as well. We'll go ahead and get the sites up, link them and post them so everyone has access. But please, please, please research your family and then sit down with your kids. And as much as we talk nonsense, talk of who they are. Don't just tell them the history that they teach us in the schools today. Teach them the history of who they are, where they come from. Find those pictures. Take care of those pictures. But today's was to highlight, to spotlight, as we said, Black history. And we didn't want to focus on the Black history that they taught us in school. We want to focus on the Black history that they taught us at home. No, you need to know that Black history, too. But you also got to continue to dig a little deeper. Don't dig just stop way right deeper. Deeper. That Black history they taught us at school was two paragraphs. Let it go. Ooh, you better talk. <laughs> no, my, my like teacher, Miss Hart, made sure we went a little just, deeper. My <laughs> people. Chris Big Addicts and all them stuff. You know, we knew about them people. Grandma Humphrey and I Sharon and them took us downtown. Came over in Charleston. They rode us in cars and took us downtown and made us go stand by murals and told us about Look churches. Up, Ian, write this down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sharon, you keep saying Ian, but everybody watching want, want this information too. Everybody that's watching, write down this book. The, de co uh, the Descendants. The Clotilda. C-L-O-T-I-L-D-A. Hold on. I'm glad you know that they need to spell Clotilda. Spell that again. C L O T I L D A. The Clotilda was the last ship that came over here with slaves in the Alabama area. And the white man that brought them over, he burned it and sunk it so there would be no trace of it. So Cujo, I can't Cujo, the black man, a black man named Cujo founded Africa Town. Is that where they named the dog from? Big black dog, the name of a big black man. It was a big black man, yes. See what I'm saying? But he just like that, they made Cujo into a famous dog, and it's this black man who did some great stuff in history. Yeah, and his family still live in the area in Alabama. See. It's the amazing things we don't know. The lady who is the founder, what the one who started with all the GPS coordinates, is then still living, honestly, oh, yeah, we know down that. in Florida. Yeah. It's so many things that we don't have a discussion about even if they take it out of schools they can't take it out your house if you teach it at home you got to know what to look for write this down <laughs> come on with it it's a book i have two copies Ooh. if you want a copy it's called the warmth w-a-r-m-t-h of other sons s-u-n-s Kevin and said it's about the great migration from the south to the north. It's heard in that book. Kevin said in the comments, find out what plantation your family grew up on. We, on my mama's side, are at Sam's Plantation in Huntsville, Alabama. I do know that. What talk? We, we are the um, Coleman Plantation and the Reed Plantation in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. You'll find out you have a city. Like he said, he found out he had a city for the family that he didn't know. He had no idea about. I didn't realize how when I dig in my history, when I get to the 1700s, it's all white until you mm -hmm. get to Alabama. And then you start mm -hmm. seeing mulatto and then you start seeing black and you start seeing women with no husbands, but a bunch of kids because of the integration. But when I look at those draft papers from those men that were born, it says Sam's place because we're from on well, my mama's side, Sam's plantation in Huntsville, Alabama. But Crystal, you keep saying mulatto, you have octoroon, you have quadroon, you have mezio. <laughs> yeah, ain't none of them on my senses, my senses. I ain't seen none of them. No, they wouldn't be because all of them are different. Like um <laughs> octoroon, that's when the black the slaves integrated with the end. Afternoon my octoroon. Mm. Yeah. But now think okay. about this. You shake a black person's tree, white people gonna fall out. So is. You shake a white person's tree, black people gonna fall out. By the dozens. Yes. Sharon, but they see, want you to say those colors one more time. <laughs> 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 I, I Yo, we gotta let Sharon go now. I, listen, she can do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> she can do this all night. You said mulatto and go through the other ones. Octoroon. Octoroon. Quadroon and Mezio. 
Mezzy. But I'm going to leave y'all with this. Might and be. I hope everybody's listening. It's a poem. Anonymous. When you were born, you were born pink. When you were little, you turned white. When you got sick, you turned green. When you went in the sun, you turned red. And when you died, you turned blue. You got the nerve. When I was born, when I was born, I was born black. When I was little, I was black. When I got sick, I was black. When I went out in the sun, I was black. When I died, I was black. Now, who you calling colored? Woo! Oh, what I tell you? You, said, but you got the nerve to call me colored. <laughs> y'all, I hope tonight that y'all truly, truly, truly digest and process. Sharon, I don't want you to get comfortable because I'm going to harass you again in June, right? Because Juneteenth, we're going to run this back one more time. But today... <laughs> Go ahead and put it on your calendar. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Calendar. If anybody needs help tracing their family, let me know. Let me know. Or how to get their book started because... Chris doesn't know his, he, he met his grandparents once, his grandfather, and he was only four years old. He doesn't remember. So you need all of that so these kids can say, well, dad, my grandfather was a carpenter. He wasn't just an ordinary slave. No. Because yes. you got the hierarchy of, of, of slaves. We can't go in and go into that one now, but that's why you got dark skin blacks not liking light skin blacks. How about that one? It's a whole lot of hate and a whole lot of conversations to have. So once again, Sharon, don't get comfortable. We're going to run this conversation back in June when Juneteenth comes around. But today, if you don't do anything else, figure out who you are, figure out where you come from, have that conversations with your children. If you do not have children, have that conversation with the younger generation in your family. Sit well, down the with the person oldest in person in your family and really get pictures get insight, get names. You have no idea where you're going if you have no idea where you came from. Exactly. And we out. I appreciate you. Make black history every day. <laughs> we don't need a month. Black history Say every what? day. He talking about black history every day. We don't need a month. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so wrong. It's but stupid. I'm Mic drop. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I appreciate y'all because without y'all having this kind of uh, podcast, people would never know. They would not know. I definitely got school tonight. I appreciate it. But on that note, I got to go to bed because I'm old and I got to get up in the morning. Go ahead and go to bed, old lady. We appreciate you more than you know. Again, everybody, right. good night. We thank y'all. We'll good see night. y'all again next Wednesday. But in Love June, we're going to run it back and have another Black All History right, conversation. Okay. Bye, Sharon. Okay. <laughs> She's definitely trying to hang up, man. She's trying to hang up and get to bed, but Again, talk to your people, all of them, mm. and make sure you get your information. We love y'all. Night. We did good. <laughs> we didn't do shit. Sharon did good. <laughs> she did share. <laughs>